Hi. So from uh, for this chapter uh, clip, we're gonna talk about the risk of the bearing the bond. So there are two different types of risk in terms of the interest. Um, because interest interest change the price of the bond. Now, if you look at the the valuation of the bond, interest basically affect to the YTM, right? And if YTM increase, interest increase, then the price of the bond decrease. So it is called the price risk. It's changing price due to the change in interest rate. So the YTM is actually just guaranteed if you hold this bond until the maturity. If you want to sell it before the maturity, then you need to actually get a new price based on the interest rate that time. If the interest rate actually rise, then you're, you may lose money. If interest rate decreases, then you may actually get more money. And long-term bonds have more price risk than short-term bonds, which means that for 30-year bond, obviously, there are more time to this come back to the present. So if interest changes, the sensitivity is actually greater. And low coupon bond have more price risk than high coupon bond. It means that, well, the price change actually more um, bigger. Like, it, I mean, price change in price, the, the range might maybe bigger for the low coupon bond since like high coupon itself, like high coupon, handle some of the uh, interest you can receive. Now, if you don't have any coupon, so zero coupon bond is deep discount bond, so the price range is a lot larger than the coupon bond. However, the interest rate changes a little bit, like the different things too, which is called the reinvestment rate risk. It means that, in fact, the coupon you receive or the par value you, you're going to receive, you're going to actually have to reinvest it, right? And this reinvestment rate is actually determined by the that time interest rate. If interest rate rise, then your reinvestment rate actually higher, which, gets, which actually generates more money. If re the interest rate low, then your reinvestment rate is low. So there are some offsetting each other, like price risk and the reinvestment risk. And short-term bonds have more reinvestment risk because you actually have to reinvest more often. And high coupon bonds have more reinvestment risk because you need to have more money coming out from high coupon and to be reinvested. So they're sort of offsetting each other. In fact, the price risk usually are bigger than reinvestment rate risk because the price changes more than the reinvestment, reinvestment the, 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 the cash flows from reinvestment rate. So we usually see this type of the price changes like the downward curve. This is three year bond and this is one year bond. And if you look at that, the slope of decline decreasing for 30 years a lot steeper than the one year, which means that it has more price risk. Now, interest rate basically changes the price of the bond, but also your YTM, your the interest rate is also determined by certain uh, characteristics of the bond, which is called the bond rating. This bond rating is, uh, is basically based on the probability of default. Default means the company doesn't pay back, right? If probability of default increase, then your bond rate decrease. It's riskier money, or riskier bond, so you actually require higher R returns, right? YTM increase. There are two, diff uh, actually three companies, Moody's, S&P, and the other is Fitch. And the the graded of the bond basically um, Carolized like a triple A, double A, single A, triple A. You know, the same notation. The notation a little bit different, but this is triple A, double A, single A, triple B. This is investment grade bond. This high grade bond is very, very reliable. This medium grade is okay, usually. So this is called investment quality bond. However, there is called also speculative bond. Sometimes you call it junk bond. 
So it's actually a very low grade. Double B, like a triple single B, triple C, you know, double C, and single C, D bond. This is kind of a speculative bond. Usually people really don't invest D bond a lot because the probability to be default very, very high. Like, you, for example, the Greek government bond once carried like single C, which is pretty risky. So for this grade, if your uh, the bond actually uh, are categorized in this grade, then you actually require return very very high. So your YTM higher, it means that company need to pay more money to the investors. Okay. Now let's look at the different uh, type of bond. Uh, one is the government bond. Government bond. There are two different governments in the United States because the United States is federal system. One is from federal government, which is called Treasury Securities. So this is issued by the Treasury Department. It is it, uh, t like a Treasury Securities has three different types of the securities based on the maturity. So the shortest one is the T bill, Treasury bill. This is pure discount bond, which means that it doesn't pay any coupon, it's zero coupon bond because the term is too short. The maturity is one year or less. And this is actually kind of the risk free asset in the world. So, this is the only risk free asset in the world. Now the second one is the treasury note is actually uh, the maturity between one to 10 years is coupon bond and T bond, treasury bond is greater than 10 years. So it's long term, sort of mid term, but these two also pretty long, long term one, you know. So it is, these are the issue, issued by the, again, the treasury department, federal government of the United States. Now there are another type of the government bond which is called municipal securities. We also call it munis. This munis is that by state or local government, the risk is actually very similar to the corporate bond, you know, and some uh, state government or local government sometimes declare default or the moratorium, you know, delay their payment. So it's actually rated by the this rating agencies, you know, and uh, this bond is has similar risk to the corporate bond. But unlike corporate bond, the interest you receive from this munis is actually tax exempt, so you don't have to pay federal tax for this interest. So basically, federal government helped the municipal government to issue bond cheaper, and also interest usually exempt from state tax in issuing state. So, if the taxable bond has yield of 8% and the municipal bond has yield of 6%, if you are in the 40% tax bracket, which bond do you prefer? Which means that you have to pay tax 40%, you know. So the taxable bond, basically, 8% is before tax uh, return. So there's after tax return for... This taxable bond will be your yield times 1 minus tax rate. So this after tax return on the corporate bond will be 8% times 1 minus 40%, right? Because you have to pay tax 40% of your income. So it's going to be 4.8%. So you really have this money, not 8%, but because you have to pay tax. So this is 4.8%. Municipal bond 6% because you don't have any pay any tax. So you like units right now at what tax rate would you be indifferent between the two bonds which means that after tax for municipal bond which is eight percent times one minus t right should be same as six percent after tax muni municipal bond so if you compute this i believe one minus t equal to Sorry, 1 minus t equals to now 0 0.06 divided by 0 0.08 and tax rate equals to now so 1 minus 
6 over 8, right? Which means that it's going to be which is 25%, right? So if, if your tax rate is 25%, then both same. If your tax rate is greater than 25%, then you like municipal bond because you have more tax benefit. If your tax rate is below 25%, then you like taxable bond because you still have more money. Zero coupon bond. Now, zero coupon bond is the bond that does not pay any coupon. So no coupon. Entire ITM, the return, come from difference between the purchasing price and the par value, which is called the capital gain. So this par value thousand, this purchase price should be a lot lower than thousand, right? Cannot sell for more than par value, obviously, because coupon rate is always zero, usually just the always less than ITM. So it's always discount bond, sometimes called a deep discount bond, called zeros or deep discount bond. T-bill, U.S. savings bonds are a good example of that. Floating rate bond. Floating rate bond now, coupon rate changes actually depending on some index value. So example, it's just rate mortgage, ARM. So it, the mortgage rate changes by certain interest rate, usually called the LIBOR. London interbank overnight rate. So if interest rate increase, then your mortgage rate increase. A lot of times there's some fixed term, like such as five years, you, you paid fixed interest rate. And then after that, every year, your interest rate change, like your coupon rate basically change based on this LIBO rate. So the LIBO plus 2.5% point or LIBO plus 2.25% point, things like that. There's also called inflation linked treasury. So when you buy treasury securities, some people worry that, well, inflation may lose your value. You may lower the values of purchasing power. So, so it's linked with the inflation rate. So it adjusts actually. So this floating rate bond has less price risk because coupon rate floats. So less likely differs substantially from the ultimate maturity. Coupon may have the color which is, which are the ceilings, which is the maximum rate, or floor, which is the minimum rate. So, it sometimes has like, the, oh, maximum is 8%, minimum is 2%, or something like that in the covenant. Bond market is primary OTC market, over-the-counter market. There's no physical stock, uh, like a physical market like stock market. There's like stock market, you can go to New York and there's a market there. Bond, there's no market there, but there are lots of dealers. So dealers connect the buy, uh, buyer and seller, issuer and investor, right? I mean, these are investors, this, this are issuer, they sell to the dealer and dealer sell to buyer. There is as bid, bid uh, the price difference, right? So dealer get a fee. It's really large number of bond issues, so bond market is very large and get to, Getting up to date price is very difficult actually because um, it's hard to get YTM. That's hard to mm, Treasury securities are auction market, so it's not dealer's market. You can actually have to participate in the auction. And unlike stock, individual investors nearly barely cannot, cannot barely, basically cannot access this market. Uh, you have to be big, um, so investors such as like an institutional investors, mutual fund, hedge fund, things like that. So usually the, you can actually invest bond by purchasing the mutual fund specializing the certain bonds. Now, you know, you like inflation linked treasuries, as I said, you know, inflation rate actually affect your purchase power a lot, right? So if inflation is very high, then even though you make money, you can actually increase the purchasing power. And the purpose of you know the the investment, we basically want to increase the purchasing power, not just the nominal rate. So there are two different types of the interest rate. One is the real rate of interest. It's basically only measure the change in purchasing power, so it already adjusted for, for inflation. There's also called the nominal rate, which is just the purchasing power and inflation. So this is quoted the rate we usually see. You actually 
want to see how much purchasing power increase for us. So there's called a Fisher effect. There's a certain relation between this is the nominal rate, this is the real rate, this is the inflation. So one plus nominal rate equals to one plus real rate times one plus inflation. This is exact computation approximately you can approximately estimate the nominal rate equals to real rate plus inflation. Let's look at the example. If we require 10% real return, it means that you want to increase your purchasing power by 10%. We expect inflation to be 8. What is the nominal rate? So, 1 plus nominal equals to 1 plus real times 1 plus inflation, right? So, R nominal equals to 1 plus real times 1 plus inflation minus 1, right? So 1 plus 10% times 1 plus 8% minus 1 will it be your real rate, I mean nominal rate, which is 0 0.188, 18.8%, .8%, right? Approximately is simply sum of the real rate plus inflation. So 10% plus 8% is 18%. So this 0.8% uh, difference, right? The difference is kind of high actually because the 0.8% is not small because this number is relatively high. 10% return and 8% inflation is a high number. So in this case, you need to use this exact calculation. If it is 2 3%, the gap is a lot narrower so then you can just use approximations now there's concept called term structure term structure is a relation between the long term and short term bond usually we like to you know we pref like a we would like to require higher return for long term bond because of uncertainty you know, so one year bond versus 30 year bond, you basically can require usually higher yield for the higher, uh, I mean, longer bond, longer term bond, right? However, sometimes, sometimes we have this, this type of the yield curve. So long term bond will require lower return than short term. So let's look at the curve here. So this is upper sloping term structure. This is normal case. So this is a real rate. So we require a certain rate, right, for time. And this is inflation premium, which means that your inflation, usually we expect that there will be inflation. So we, in, we expect inflation is increasing, so we actually require higher inflation premium for the longer term bond. Now this is interest rate risk premium, interest rate risk premium, interest rate risk is higher for the longer bond, right? So price risk is higher than reinvestment rate risk, and the long-term bond usually bear the higher interest rate risk. So this is a premium, long-term higher. So you can see usually the upward sloping term structure for normal time. So this is normal time. However, if we expect the market gets worse, so we expect that the, the economy is in recession, usually we worry about deflation, right? Price level decrease. So real rate still the same, Inf interest rate risk premium still the same, you know, larger for short term, but because we expect the deflations, you know, we sometimes require lower return for long term bond, higher return for short term bond. So it means that you have downwards sloping. So this is red flag for the firm. This is this means that investors expect that the market gets down. Market's going to be recession, economy goes bad. So uh, this is kind of the the signals that uh, investment perception that the economy will be in recession. So it's it's recession time. Sometimes we have just part of the the inverted yield curve. So look at this yield curve. This is as of March 6, 2009. This is one year ago. So this is March 6, 2008. All right. And we see this has some inverted zone for 2008 curve. So this is kind of the time that people actually worry about the economy. Now, so we have some inverted zone. Now, 2009 
you know, after the crisis of 2008, we basically are recovering the economy. People are more optimistic, so we back to the normal yield curve. So yield curve is very good signal for the um, signal for the investments perception about the future economy. You can actually find the yield curve, daily yield curve in Wall Street Journal all the time. So what factors may affect the required returns? First, default risk. So this is based on the bond rating. So think about AAA versus, say, double B. Then you require higher return for this bond. Number two, taxability premium. So if you pay, if you have to pay tax, you may require higher. So municipal versus taxable. Because so the important number is after tax number. Liquidity premium means that you want to uh, easily convert this bond to cash. Sometimes it's, it's not easy to measure, but it's usually measured by the volume. So if bond has more volume, frequent trading, then it generally have lower required return. And then finally, the maturity premium is long-term, short-term one. Usually long-term tends to have higher required return, but sometimes you have inverted yield curve, you know, in recession time, short term, sometimes have higher recovery return. So anything else, you know, anything else that affects the risk of the cash flow, the bondholder will affect the required return. So, but these four factors are very important factors that may affect the recovery return for bond investor. So this is for the chapter six.